We live in the south of the UK, near the sea, the least snowy place on the mainland. And after five years in this house, I've never seen more than a dusting. So imagine my joy when I looked out of the window and saw this. When your house is centuries old, you live alongside ghosts, at least metaphorically, of everyone who has spent their winters here. Of course, until the modern era, residents didn't have double glazing or central heating. We turned the electric heating off though and started using our fire, just to feel connected to all the snug fireside comfort people have felt here in previous winters. Call me cheesy, but I felt like I was walking in their footprints. On snowy nights like this one, I hope they always had plentiful stores of food and drink indoors. In the Middle Ages, there was already a house here before this one. It had a storage room for food and drink, called a buttery, exactly where our room is now. I wonder what they filled their stores with for the winter. Before the cold arrived, we had also gathered in our last harvest. We raided the hedgerows, making slow gin, our favorite for the depths of winter. After the so-called medieval warm period, which was actually colder than now, the climate continued to cool and the era known as the Little Ice Age was beginning. The Christmas of 1536 was so cold that the River Thames froze. The Tudor King Henry VIII and the pregnant Queen Jane Seymour, his third wife, rode on horseback across the frozen river. A year later, this monastery near us was surrendered to King Henry. We explored its ruins on another frosty winter day. The Little Ice Age wasn't a time of perpetual ice. The global temperature dipped less than a degree Celsius overall. But regional severe weather events like the cold snaps in England that froze the Thames, got more severe and more common. This medieval monastery being demolished coincided with our Tudor farmhouse being built. These stone windows in our attic are thought to have been recycled from the ruins.
As our snowy week continued, we stayed cozy within the thick walls of our little Ice Age home. The walls upstairs were built from wattle and daub, which provides surprisingly good insulation, at least until it falls apart. Apparently, after almost 500 years, the walls of Tudor homes lose less heat than the fake Tudor houses built in the 1960s. I wonder how the hardest winters of the Little Ice Age affected the people in this house. Our snow lasted a week. In the 17th century, some years the snow stayed continually until March, as well as the direct effects of spoiled harvests, dead livestock and dangerous ice storms. Historians have asked whether the social instability the economic crises and wars of the 17th century were indirect results of a society under climate stress, struggling from one tough year to the next. Here and now, the climate is changing at a rate that makes the Little Ice Age melt into insignificance. Just after the snow gave a refreshing twist ending to the UK's hottest year on record, the new year began with what has been described as Europe's most extreme heat wave ever. With the temperature in Bilbao on New Year's Day 2023, equaling the average for July. The loss of snow here in Sussex is not the world's biggest concern. Nonetheless, climate models predict that unless we can slow the warming trend, there might not be many more winters when snow covers this roof. Nothing less than systemic change can prevent the worst outcomes, but we all need to act. You know how invested I feel in protecting our beautiful world and its beings. But then over Christmas, I read an article by my favorite journalist saying that wood burners, like the one we'd been enjoying so much, are shockingly polluting. I almost wish I hadn't read it. Lots of people rely on fires and can't give them up. But we got no excuse. We have radiators that use green electricity. Environmental crises can bring out the worst in us. I wanted to keep my fire, to doubt the facts I read, to blame worse polluters, but also the joy of the fire had been extinguished, 
now that I knew I was polluting the clean, snowy world that I love. I felt really sad about the future, so I went back to reading about the past. I learned that during the Little Ice Age, their climate catastrophes were blamed on witches and Jews and on overindulgence in drinking, sex, food and dancing. That cheered me right up. If it was indulgence, Jews and witches that brought the cold that froze over the Thames, maybe we do have something to offer to keep our winters snowy and our planet livable. Josh is Jewish and I'm pretty witchy and between us we've got those indulgences covered. It gave me an idea. If we swap the polluting fire with something that feels just as meaningful to us, then nothing is lost. I chose this ostrich egg zodiac lamp. It's as witchy as it is Jewish. Josh inherited it from Rabbi Arlene Wallhouse, who he was close to until her death when he was 16. Josh has twice accidentally smashed it into tiny pieces and painstakingly repaired it. Which makes me think of how sometimes we all harm what we care for, like the earth but can lovingly restore it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs>